Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Second Timothy chapter four. I charge thee, a charge, an order, or military. Well God uses the proper words. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, those made alive, that's us, and the dead. That's a, that's a uh, great white throne judgment. Paul speaks about the judgment of the Christians and the, and the judgment of the lost. At his appearing, second advent, and his kingdom, the millennium. Look at the order. Preach the word. Got it? It's three words. Preach the word. Anything else? Be instant. In season, in the pulpit, when you're called before someone's pulpit. Out of season, when you're out in the streets. When you're dealing with lost people, when you're dealing with saved people. There's nowhere where the word of God should not, not be preached. hope I said that correctly. Anytime. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Why long suffering? Because no one's going to listen to you. Very few will. You got to have patience in the ministry with the people. And doctrine, that's teaching. There is no room for opinions or like in the ministry. It's not what you think, it's not what you like. It's what the word says. Preach it. Why? For the time will come. Will come. Will come. It's not if. It's will. When they will not endure sound doctrine. The teaching of the Bible. Though you preach the word, they're not going to listen to you. How's that? How would you like to have somebody come up to you and say, All right, here's the positive. But the positive, I'm telling you, is not going to happen. And yet, doesn't that Bible have that subject all through the Bible? Especially the prophets. Jeremiah, I want you to go preach to those people, but they're not going to listen to you. Ezekiel, tell those people, but they're not going to listen to you. Listen, God knows people. People are rebellious. There is nothing good about a man. Outside Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ. Get your heart off man because he, he's, he's imperfect. He's impure. He's unholy. Will not endure sound doctrine. They're not going to last it out. They're not going to strive it out. They're not going to long suffer it out. They're not going to patiently put up. But. It's a bad but. But. After their own lust. Plural. Shall they heap a mound to themselves, teachers, that sounds good, comma, having itchy ears, an infection. They're going to tingle their ears. They're going to make it sound so good, so lovely, so wonderful. And, <laughs> and... And, you mean that's not good enough? That's, that's a semicolon. They, the teachers, 
See, they who don't want to sound doctor are going to bring these, these itchy teachers in, and those itchy teachers shall, shall, it's going to happen, turn away their ears that were itchy from the truth. Timothy, what do you do? You preach the word. And while you preach the word, somebody is going to be tingling the congregation somewhere. And shall, look at the ends, be turned unto fables. And how many Baptist churches are going to have Easter coming up? How many will have their children chase eggs and maybe have the deacon dressed up as an Easter bunny? That's a fable. How about pastors with their with their stories that they steal from other pastors? Probably have a book somewhere. That's a fable. It's a lie. You know, you we've gone away in the churches in Sunday school. We've gone away from the characters of the Bible to characters of make believe. Veggie tales. Pastor Paul is a real guy, but he he turned all of it away from the Bible. All right, I'm sorry you lost your eye, but, you know, when everything's about you and a pirate who is a wicked person that steals, I don't think history ever speaks about one good pirate. Fables. They're not going to teach about David Goliath. They're not going to teach about Paul preaching. They're not going to teach about Jesus healing. They're going to have fables. Jesus slept with Mary Magdalene. Jesus, he didn't really die. And when he when they put his body on that slab in the, in the cave, it came back to life. And Mary really did have relations with Joseph. And yet, Mary, again, she was the perfectional virgin of all life. And if you're going to heal, you got to get, you know, there's all kinds of fables out there. And then we, we can go through all the seasons of the calendar, but there's, there's fables. In Baptist churches that proclaim the Bible, that man will get up and preach the word, and then have a Christmas tree. But, but this is a good but. We had a bad but. Here's a good but. Pay attention to the buts of the Bible. Watch. You know what that man's called in the military? He's called a watchman. You gotta look out. What are you watching for? The enemy. Are they coming up? Are they trying to get in the camp? What are they up to? Watch. Thou, Timothy, in all things. How's that? All things. Endure. They won't endure. You endure affliction. Uh oh. I mean, they're not going to endure sound doctrine, but Timothy, you're the, and isn't this, this book is so great about the afflictions and problems and, and uh, the troubles that Christians will get. And when these people turn away and leave your ministry and leave your church and talk about you and give you a hard time and give you a bad name, Endure it because you know why they didn't endure the sound doctrine that you're to preach verse 2 3 and 4 and 5 go all together If they won't endure Timothy you endure if they're not going to last to the end when Christ calls us home you endure Do the work of an evangelist That's the man that travels around and aids Christians in the churches Make full proof of thy ministry. Prove it. Live it. Be it. For I am now ready to be offered. Paul speaking. This is the last words Paul's going to write. And the time of my departure is at hand. Sounds like an airplane freight. He's going flying. He's going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. So, when you go to an airport and you go to a train station, 
What word do they use about the means of transportation that's going to leave? The word departure. Why of all the why don't they say plane flight 47 is going to leave? At, why do you use the word departure? Because you're going from one place to another place by a miracle. Because man can't fly, man can't try travel as fast as a train can, and boy can we not go to God Jesus Christ upon our death on our own merit. It's got to be supernatural. So our departure. The world uses the Bible words, and they yet proclaim, "Oh, the Bible, you know, that's archaic. The Bible, you know, that's that's not in proper English. Uh, we got an update. It's so archaic. It it it's not right." And yet, you use the words of the Bible. I have fought a good fight. Look at that. It's a warfare. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's what every Christian should do. Fight, finish, keep. Fight, finish, keep. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. This is one of the five crowns. Titus 2.13, Revelation 22.20. 4, 1, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18, 1 Corinthians 15, 54, looks like. That defines verse 15. I think it looks like 51 or 54. Bad writing on my part. All right, let's look at this crown. A crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Here is a crown that God, who is the judge, and according to the Bible, the judge at the judgment seat of Christ at that day is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ will give Paul this crown of righteousness. Okay? And not to me only. Alright, so this crown is not just for Paul. But unto all them also that love his appearing. How simple is this crown? Do you want Jesus Christ to come back more than anything else? There's a crown. How do you get the crown? Jesus Christ himself will give you this crown. Wasn't it enough that he suffered and died and bled? That he is going to give me a crown because I want him to come. Now I guarantee in church history, this crown is going to be handed out to abundance. I don't think there's going to be a lot of crowns in this church age. They're not looking for Jesus. They don't even know who Jesus is. So look how easy this crown is. You are to want him to come. Titus 2.13. It's so simple. These crowns are so simple. And you find out if you if you earn one crown, you're going to earn another crown. It's almost simple as if you break one of the Ten Commandments, you're going to break another Ten Commandments. And then eventually you're going to break three commandments. If you really study that out, and one crown will earn you two crowns, and it will earn you three crowns. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Do all your preparation. Make sure you've got everything settled and right. So Paul really wants to go to Timothy or he wants Timothy to come to him. He wants to fellowship with Timothy. For Demas, we read about him. Uh, Colossians 4.14, Philemon 24. Great man. Has forsaken me. Now you may say, well, Paul's getting a little, you know, thinking of himself here, high and mighty. He's left Paul a big deal, having loved this present world. Does that tell you why Demas left? What's the parable of the sower? Mark chapter 4. The cares and the riches of the world choked Demas. Scripture with scripture. 
deem himself something more important than Jesus Christ. Now, here's a question. Will Demas get the crown of rejoicing? Not. Now, you want to know how stupid Demas is? And you want to see how long-suffering God is? That he wants Demas to come back? Watch. And departed unto Thessalonica. Remember that wonderful church we read about in 1st and 2nd Thessalonica? This is not the place for a backslidden Christian to go run to. He is running into a battlefield of Christians that are fighting the good fight. And he's going to be bitter and envy if he doesn't get corrected. Hi, Demas. Come on, let's go knock on doors. Let's go win. Let's go preach on the street. Let's go get... Uh, no, no, no. I don't want to do that anymore. Oh, come on. What's your problem? Now, if he didn't get correct, he, he, he would be saying, this is, why did I go here? Of all the places that this guy can go, he went to the wrong place. Because that Thessalonica church, man, they are faithful and just right. And you wonder, because there are other letters that Paul sent that we don't have in our Bible. He just picture third Thessalonians. Hey, guys, guess who's in your back door? Doesn't he name people? Well, you got to watch out for demons. It's departing Thessalonica. Chrysis to Iglesia. That's another church that we. Titus. And that's the next book. Onto Dalmatia. I guess that's a land of spotted dogs. Only Luke is with me. So you tell me at, at Paul's end, right now, he looks to the left, he looks to the right, turns around, and the only one there is Luke. And this one would be the one that told, hey, tell Timothy a little, little wine, no more water. That's where he got it from. Luke the medical doctor. This is the same Luke that wrote the Gospel of Luke. Paul has a great companion because he's, he's traveling with the man that wrote one of the Gospels. And Luke is traveling with one of the men that write the New Testament. And Paul is so in line with the, with the Apostle John in their writings. Take Mark and bring him with me. With me, excuse me. And he is profitable to me for the, for the ministry. You remember what happened in the book of Acts? Let's take Mark and go. Go. Come on, Mark. Take, uh, come on, Paul. Let's take Mark. And remember what the Bible says? The contention was so sharp among them. Paul was so angry at Mark for leaving the, the group, leaving the missionary group, and went wherever he went, and whatever reason he went back. And Paul has now to say about Mark. This guy is wonderful for the ministry. Take him. Just as much as he said about Timothy. Timothy, go to this church. Stop at this church. He is saying, take Mark. Mark is improved. Paul had to swallow a lot of humble pride. He had to eat a lot of crow. And don't you think that the Lord tackled his heart with that one? Oh, really? You didn't want Mark with you, did you? Yeah, yeah, Lord. I repent. Stop it. Take Mark and bring him with thee. Timothy, you're such a good man. I want to bring you with him. I want you to come to see me. I want you to I want to see you. Take Mark and bring him with thee. Guess what he just said? This man that he was mad at the ministry, pick up Mark and bring him here. I want to see you two boys. Men, whatever they are. They're young. That one that, that Paul says, no. He's like, will you bring him? He's great for the ministry. Profitable. We read that last night. Profitable for the ministry. Not to make money. Not to mooch off people. But he is rewarded. He's a great reward. Antichicus. Titus 3.12. Have I sent to Ephesus? Look what Paul's doing. He's sending these people out to the churches. So they will grow. They'll get right. They got problems. Here. Whatever the needs are, I don't know what they are, but he sends faithful men. 
the cloak that I have uh, that I left at Troas with Carpus. When thou comest, bring with thee, bring me my cloak and the books, but but no good but especially the parchments. Look, he, he can have everything he wants. He wants a cloak, and he wants some books, and he wants some parchments. This is the one that said, with food and raiment and, and drink, I'm content. Don't you think if Timothy had all power with all the churches that, that respected Timothy, that if Paul were to ask for anything, he would be able to get it? And look what he asked for. One, two, three things. So where does, where does man get when you rub the Aladdin's lamp you want three wishes? Where did that come from? What would you ask? If there were, uh, I know it's a fable. We're not supposed to teach fable. But if Aladdin's lamp was real, what three things would you ask for? You would never get option two or three with me. It would be glory. Rapture. You don't realize what comes out of the Bible, do you? Alexander the coppersmith. Did me much evil. Look at that. He's naming them. Like I said, I always and it could be wrong. Maybe I'm being worldly. But if he were to write the Thessalonian church, Demas, Demas is in trouble. Alexander Coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his work. Ooh, Paul. How? Paul, love thy neighbor. But that's not Paul saying, God, go get him. Paul is making a doctrinal statement here. If men teach and do Christians wrong, God will reward them to what they do. And if Alexander gave Paul much evil, guarantee what is Alexander going to get? Much evil in return. What is evil? Evil is the, 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 uh, it's the result of sin. Of whom be thou where also. Timothy, watch out for Alexander. You know who he is. He's an enemy. For he has greatly withstood our words. And if it's Paul's words, it's the word of God. We've had Alexander the Coppersmith in our ministry. I can name him all. Where's the peace? Peace. Where's the peace? And where is he? That guy's gone. We had the spaghetti god monster guy. Where did he go? He's gone. We had the bongo man. Where is he? He's gone. You're going to get your Alexanders in your ministry. And they will try to do you evil. Just keep serving God. Keep preaching in season, out of season. You know that's what Paul did. Paul is not going to tell Timothy to do something that Paul would not do himself. So it's proper to go up to a Christian and say... You know, hi, I listen to this guy on the radio or the TV. And, you know, brother, sister. They wouldn't be listening to them. And then tell them. He tells them, because he withstood the words. Tell them why that person is not good to be watched or listened to. Don't just say, hey, that person is not good. Give them, if you can, a scriptural reason. And then you've done your job. You preach in season, out of season. You try to grow a Christian. You reprove, rebuke them. And what they do, that's their problem. Or they're growing. I mean, have we ever always tried to tell our children, don't touch that stove? And then you look at their finger. Well, what's that mark on your finger? Um, you didn't listen to me, did you? At my first answer, no man stood with me. But all men forsook me. I know this verse. I know this verse by living by the Bible. People in churches that you know will not be there for you. Oh, some will say, yeah, I'll fall. And then, where are they? The guy that witnessed to me that I have told a testimony of, the day I got saved, that Saturday afternoon, 
He left me for the wolves and lions to devour. He, I got saved. He showed me how to get saved, but he never grew me. And then when I was, when I said I'm going to be, I'm being called to preach, and I need, man, he turned away from me. And then there were things I, 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 I scripturally with the church and all that, and he rebuked me and, and forsook me. The man that led me to Jesus Christ. The first pastor I ever had of the Bible and, and helped me with the Lord turned his back on me. Another pastor turned on his back on me because of pride and arrogancy of who he was. They're not going to be there. Notwithstanding, I hope with all the people that I have, with my condition right now, I hope I have a medical doctor. I need one. Notwithstanding, Wait a minute. For has was forsook me, I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Now that is in opposition of verse 14. Paul is not cursing them. He says, Man, I just hope, you know, maybe there's something I didn't understand. Maybe God's doing something with him. But Timothy, Evangelist, endure affliction. Where I am in my life right now, I'm alone. Timothy, you could be of great value to someone in another church somewhere, but I, I want to be with you. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Oh, see, see, look, look who stands with you. So don't ever say, oh, I've been completely forsaken. Because then you're, you're lying about God. The Lord is there. And strengthen me. He gives you strength. He gives you comfort. He loves you. That by me, the preaching might be fully known. See, he's still preaching. I know a faithful man right now. He's in Africa serving the Lord with his wife. And many times he would go knocking on doors and tell them about Jesus all by himself. No one else would go with him. And look what the Lord's done with his wonderful wife. A man I highly respect. And that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Does that sound good? Now, can you find the other reference to that one there? Again, the parable of the sower. What happened to the seed? It was devoured by birds, wasn't it? Who is that bird? That's the devil. Your adversary as a lion goes about seeking who he may devour. You know Paul's life, man. He was in that lion's mouth many times. You know Satan kept an extra guard of devils after Paul. The devils say... Jesus I know, <laughs> and we know Paul. You know how good Paul was? You know the greatest example of Paul, how good he was, though he won't say it? Do you know another man that, that had his life in the mouth of, of the devil? Job. <laughs> Wasn't Job devoured by Satan? All his livestock, his children, and his health, and his wife. That's what it means to be devoured. What did Paul have in, in, in 2 Timothy 4, the end of his life? The clothes on his back, maybe some parchments and a cloak, and chains. He would not leave a last will and testament. Satan devoured all that. He left it all for Jesus. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Get you out of it, Paul. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, the millennium. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.
I like Paul. He always closes a message then salute Priscilla and he goes about it again. Super, su, yeah, salute Priscilla and Aquila. Do you remember who these two were? These were the husband and wife tent makers that worked with Paul. So they're somewhere in the ministry and they know who Timothy is and they're all working together. And the household of Anasperavitz. Aren't you glad we're going to get new names in heaven? Hopefully it'll be easier to pronounce. Can you imagine that poor guy's mother? Oh, no, so for us, get your butt in this house right now. These long names. I feel sorry for the, for the mothers. Arrest to us. And forgive me if I'm pronouncing them wrong. But at least I'm trying to pronounce them reading the Bible. Abode at Corinth. Isn't but Terophimus, have I left that Melitium? What's that say? Well, Paul must have been out of the spirit, God, because he couldn't heal, according to the Pentecostals. Paul left him. Paul was in company with Terophimus, sick, and Paul could not heal him in his dying days. That's the signs are gone. The apostles' signs are going. And this is an example here. So, and Luke was with him. So when they tell you you go to these faith healing meetings on that, and you're not you're you're not healed because of your faith. Are you going to tell me that Paul had no faith? Or Luke? Even Luke. Again. Hey, Luke, yes, Paul? Timothy's having problem with it, problems with his stomach. Well, go lay hands on him. Send him your handkerchief. No, no, no. Drink a little. Luke, we've got the powers of hearing. Luke, may the force be with you. No. The signs of the apostles are dying out. Medicine, alcoholic medicine for Timothy's stomach and this guy being left sick. So what do you tell a Pentecostal? Mention these two verses to him. When you get when you deal with a Pentecostal, if you want to get them mad, say you got somebody sick, yeah, you got a hand and blah blah blah, and then say, didn't Luke travel with Paul? Yeah, he did. Didn't he tell him to drink some kind of medicine? And that will go good with Mary Baker Eddy because they didn't believe in any medicine. Herbs and, and, and all that stuff. And here this man is left sick by Paul. Paul couldn't do nothing for him. Paul was sick himself. He couldn't heal himself. And he had a whole company of apostles around him. And no one could heal him. I guess they lack faith. Or the people that say you lack faith over healing are liars and perverters and deceivers of the word of God. You need to avoid them. You don't read the scriptures. Do thy diligence again to come before winter. <laughs> you see how much he wants Timothy to come? Make sure, make sure you got enough money. Make sure you got all the goods. Make sure, you know, it's a proper time. Come before winter because winter, you know, shipping's hard. It's cold. Ebola us greets, greeteth they, and Putin's. And Linus and Claudia and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Grace with grace be with you. Amen. And that closes off Paul's life. 